Hello and welcome. This is going to be a 200 word per minute literary dictation gaining a leash on life part 12. And we will begin now. Authenticity. Money will buy you a pretty good dog, but it won't buy the wag of its tail. No, money won't buy the wag of a dog's tail because as Martin Buxbaum so aptly stated it, a dog wags its tail with its heart and you can't buy that. With a four-footed companion, what you see is what you get. The joyful wa wag of the tail is simply the outer reflection of the joy in the heart. No deceit, no artificiality, simple authenticity. This is not always true for us non-dogs. Your journey into increased awareness may have challenged you to accept all, not just some, of the discoveries of that journey. Now you are summoned to be real, to be true, to be authentic to these discoveries of self and the world. Being authentic and living authentic lives is not an easy task. We are the products of a time and culture that extols the value of image. It's not who you are, but what you wear. It isn't what you know, but who you know, and so on. It's all about the surface. You know, perception is reality. So many of us have fallen trapped to this pursuit of the right way to be or the right image to project that we have forgotten or abandoned the how we really are. We seem surrounded by implants, Botox, steroid produced muscles, exaggerated lifestyles, all pulling us away from what is genuine. Hopefully your journey into awareness and acceptance has been a profitable venture. Hopefully you have rediscovered the gift with which is you and the wonderful joys to be discovered in the simplicity of the world around us. With this perspective in place, the hyped images inviting you to be more than you can be will now fall on your deaf ears. Knowing and accepting yourself places you in a position in which anything less than authentic, less than real, less than true is less than acceptable. The lessons to be found in this section will invite you to continue your journey, ever growing in your ability to be real, vulnerable, and faithful. Dogma 8, Being Real. Recollect that the Almighty, who gave the dog to be companion of our pleasures and our toils, hath invested him with a nature noble and incapable of deceit. Incapable of deceit, incapable of being a fraud, incapable of being less than real. These are all descriptions of our four-footed companions and beacons for our own health and wholeness. But to be real requires that we shed our masks. It requires us to rid ourselves of all games and lose all the scripts that may have guided us in the past. Contrary to what Shakespeare suggested, the world is not a stage, nor is your life a play and you an actor in it. No, the world is a gift and your life is a journey to experience. Through it all, it is only when you are willing to be you and allow others to be as they are that you will experience the gift of life. Being real is the process by which you become aware, accept, and as we will see in the next section, celebrate our authenticity. There were times, especially early in my career as a psychologist, that I sometimes felt as if I had to put on my game face. When I would meet a new client, in my eagerness to do it correctly, I would sometimes try too hard and become somewhat artificial in my care and concern. Often our desire to do it correctly or be liked by another forces us to play out a role. We may feel like we are bound to perform or enact certain types of behaviors, such as those associated with being male or female, being a parent, a teacher, or even a psychologist. When we act from a prescribed role, we fail to be real. To be real requires us to be role free. To be real requires that we are open as opposed to defensive and genuine as opposed to phony. To be real means at any one time we are congruent with our words, actions, tones, thoughts, and feelings. We are in concert and expressing our, a consistent message. Being real, being congruent, means that what we project to the world reflects that which is truly within. There are no hidden agendas or ulterior motives, nor will you find any guises or attempts at deceit. What you see is what is. The tail is wagging only because the heart is and not in an attempt to win favor. Just being real, just being a dog. So how does one become real? How are we to shed the masks, the artificial roles, the phoniness? Hopefully you have already discovered a major portion of the answer to these questions. By becoming more aware and by accepting that awareness, you have hopefully come to appreciate that those discovered realities are far better than any mask or artificial role and script you may have created in the past. Being you is better than being any part you could play. Accepting yourself, accepting others, and accepting the world as it is is better than any game with its illusions and artificiality. So hopefully your trip through awareness and acceptance have moved you to be real. But in addition to awareness and acceptance, there is another ingredient that is essential to becoming real. Love. You must become a lover of self and of others and of life. 
1927, Margar Marjorie Williams wrote a beautiful story of love, The Velveteen Rabbit. In that story, readers are introduced to the wisdom of the skin horse. In one very poignant section of the story, the horse patiently explains to the rabbit that the real is, isn't how you are made. It's a thing that happens to you. When a child loves you for a long, long time, not just to play with, but really loves you, then you become real. Okay, that's the end of part 12. And the next one will go into part 13, and I'll see you there.